What's up YouTube? Ed here with Edward R. Knives and today we're going to go over how I program cam for a knife that I'm looking to make in the CNC machine. Uh, the knife that you see here, I'm looking to have this fully CNC'd with hand finishing to get the details nice and crisp. Um, I've already drawn this out in the modeling space, so there's a ton of videos out on YouTube that will probably do a better job of walking you through it than I ever could. Uh, guys like John Saunders have already uh, conquered that territory, so definitely check them out. Um, luckily, I had a buddy of mine, Nick Polonoski, with P3D Creations. Um, I'll go ahead and link his, uh, his Instagram in the description down below. Um, he's helped me out with the cam and the CAD space. And, man, I'll tell you, I've been doing this for about a year now as far as drawing. And I've been doing the cam programming for the last couple of months. And he's really shortened my learning curve on this. I can't thank the guy enough. He also does part-time consulting. So if you are needing a hand for your stuff as well, uh, definitely hit him up. Uh, his rates are very, very reasonable. And he is great at what he does. So, all right, enough of the plug. Let's get to work. Um, as you can see here, the knife is fully drawn. I've modeled out the hardware for the screws, the pivot screws. Um, I'll be using 3 16 pivots with a 3 8 head, holding on the G10 scales to an S30V blade. The stock that I have, I got from Alpha Knife Supply. It's 212 thou thick as it stands. I'll be machining that down to the proper thickness which on this knife is 3 16 So what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and prepare the model itself for the cam space. We'll go ahead and hide the screws here. And then as far as the scales go, let's go ahead and move those out of the way rather than hiding them. Hit M for move. We'll select the component, slide it up, hit OK. We're going to flip the drawing around, same thing. Hit M for move, select the scale, I'm going to pull this one a little bit farther out, and then we're going to rotate it so that they're both facing in the same direction, which would be 180 degrees. Enter. Now what we're going to do, you can see they're at different heights, we're going to line the bottom of them so that when it sits on the fixture plate, which I have drawn right here, and we'll go into more detail on that later, um, but we're going to go ahead and try to align them so that it saves us work down the road. So we're going to hit S on the keyboard for search, A for align, enter. And you definitely want to get used to the shortcuts. It'll save you a ton of time over the course of a drawing. Um, it's asking us which object, well, components, we'll go ahead and select it. We want to go from here to here. And it automatically aligns the bottom of it. We'll hit OK there. And now you see everything is as it should be. I'll rotate that around. Now that we've got that set up, we'll go ahead and hide the scales. And we'll move over to the cam space. Alright. Now that we're in the cam space, you can see it's quite a bit different than the modeling space. Uh, you've got tabs here for setup, 2D operations, 3D operations, drilling, multi-axis, Turning, if you're doing lathe work, cutting for, uh, let's say you have a laser cutter or a laser engraver, this is where you would program it all. Actions, so you can simulate the process, make sure it's doing what you want it to do. Post-process, which will take you to code that you can then upload onto the CNC machine. And then you can also print out a setup sheet so that you know what tools to pull to put into your tool holders. The next tab that you have here is inspect, which is exactly the same as you would find in the modeling space. Manage, you got your tool library. Um, haven't used Task Manager or Form Mill yet. Add-ins, haven't touched that one yet. So we'll just go with what I know and what I do. Um, it might not be how everybody does it, but it's what works for me. So go ahead and click Setup for a new setup. It's asking us here to select the stock po box point. Uh, the stock point on the stock is pretty important. It's how you find your zero. 
the way it's oriented right now, it's fairly correct with the Z height going up and down, the Y axis going away from us, and then the X axis going from left to right. That's how I plan on putting it on the fixture plate here. Uh, for this one, this rail represents the Y axis. This one represents the X axis. The stock will go across this way and I'll be holding it down using masking tape and CA glue, a uh, technique that I found through John Saunders' NYCNC, NYC CNC YouTube channel. He's got his uh, Fusion Fridays that is very comprehensive in how he does things, and it's a great resource for anybody looking to learn CNC. So that being said, let's go back to the knife, and oh, we got rid of that. Okay, let's go. Now that we've got that drawn there, uh, let's see here. Okay, so the box point, we're going to change that to this corner right up here. The reason I'm selecting this corner is because of the way I have it oriented on the fixture plate. I'll be able to find the zero for the X and Y by going along this edge here, as well as the edge of the rail here that the stock is butted up against. And then I have it on top because on the Z, I can just touch down with an indicator to find the top of the stock. The model is obviously the body of the knife. Um, the stock, it kind of guesses what you want. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the dimensions that it gave us are. Well, actually, it shows it down here. We'll go ahead and change that to exactly what we want. So we'll go to a fixed size box. Width, it has us at 8.5. That's a little bit tight. We'll change that to 9 inches. Give us a little bit of room to work with. Um, the stock itself is 1.5 inches, which is exactly what my stock is. Um, it'll work, but I'll probably end up machining into the rails, uh, which is fine. I mean, that's what that fixture plate's for. Um, the height is definitely not a half inch knife. It's three sixteenths, so one, three, seven, five for the Z height. Or I'm sorry. One eight seven five. I don't know what I was thinking. So we've got exactly to that. Um the stock that I have is actually two hundred and twelve thou, just under a quarter of an inch. I'll be decking that down on a manual mill with a face face mill. Um which I mean it's easy enough to do. So, yeah, now that we've got the stock exactly where we want it, we'll click OK, have it saved, double check that we have everything that we need, Z is going up uh, as the tool orientation is, Y is going away, X is going side to side, the knife is sitting right in the middle, which is important because when we flip it over, and you'll see in uh, another, uh, probably in part two, um, we'll select a new origin for that. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, now that we've got the stock picked out, let's start getting into some of the operations. Now, the knife here, I'm planning on 3D machining the bevels, 2D contouring out the weight reduction holes as well as the lanyard holes, and then the outline of the knife itself. For the holes that hold the hardware in, we're going to use a drilling operation. So we'll go to the drill, click drill, tool. It's going to ask us what tool we want to use. Uh, we have a 316 spot drill. If you're not familiar with what a spot drill is, it's basically pre-drilling a hole a very tiny amount so that the actual drill that you use isn't going to wander and walk around on you. So you have the hole exactly where you want. It's a very rigid tool, it's a very sharp tool, and it it does the job perfectly. So the, now that we have the tool selected, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the geometry tab. It's going to ask us where the hole faces are. We're going to tell it we want this, that, and that hole pre-drilled for us. We're going to go to the heights to edit that. So let's bring it in, zoom it in a little bit closer. I'll select the bottom so that it's nice and straight. And I'll zoom in so it's nice and clear. Okay. The Heights tab, I'm not really great at. Um, I, I've machined a slip joint 
already. I've machined a carabiner and I've machined a little uh, just pocket memorial for a buddy of mine. And, you know, I probably waste a lot of time with the tool kind of working its way down. That's okay. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to set the bottom height. We don't want to drill all the way through with the spot drill, so we're going to change that uh, from hole bottom to the model top. So the model top, you can see there's nothing there now, and we're going to give it an offset. Let's say we want it to go down, uh, I don't know, 10 thou? We'll see how that looks. Does it have to be a negative? There you go. 10,000 a little bit too deep. So let's change that. We'll do half that amount. We'll do... Or I'm sorry, I did 100,000, didn't I? So that's 10,000. 10 thousandths of an inch. That's just enough for uh, a little divot in there for the drill to bite into, which is perfect. So we'll click OK on that. Um, as far as the cycle, uh, let's see here. The cycle's perfect. For the speeds and feeds, we'll worry about that after the fact. I like to run through all the tools and then go back and do the speeds and feeds. Sorry, so we've got that figured out. There you go. You want to see how that works, we'll go ahead and simulate it for you. Let me zoom out so you guys can see. It's going to come in. You see it's not going all the way through, it's just barely pecking in there. Give you a little divot to work with. Now we're going to come in and drill again, but this time we're going to drill the actual holes. So we're going to change tools. Documents, all, let's see. I've got some tools saved in here already. Uh, I just don't know exactly what I have. I might have to program some in there. Okay. So for this guy, we'll go ahead and add the actual drill that we need. So the type of tool or this is all the tools you can pick from. Well, there we go. So the spot drill, you can kind of see what it looks like. But we need a twist drill. Two flutes, high speed steel, three sixteenths, so that's point one eight seven five. Flute length that looks all about or actually the drill that I have is a little bit let me grab the drill and measure it. It's ideal, uh, I'm sorry you guys can't see this, but it's ideal that you have the tools in front of you to measure uh, just so that you get everything correct. Uh, so what I'm doing right now, even though you guys can't see, is I'm measuring the flute lengths on the drill that I have. This is showing one and a quarter. I'm going to edit that, 1.25. The overall length. is two and a half, 2.5. The body length is stick out. So it, it basically how much we want it to stick out. Um, the less it sticks out, the more rigid the tool is. So we'll do an inch and a quarter on this one. Actually, no, the flute length is an inch and a quarter. So we'll do an inch and a half. There you go. Hit OK. Tools automatically selected. We'll hit OK again. And now we'll go to the geometry tab to select the holes. So we'll go this hole, that hole, and that hole. Now for the heights, we'll go ahead and do the same thing, orient it so that we're looking at it straight on, and we can kind of see what it's doing. So you can see here it's drilling the hole. The tip of the drill is going right to the bottom of the hole. We don't really want that. We want the hole to go all the way through. So we're going to select this box right here for drill tip through bottom. And it comes through the bottom completely. We want to make sure that it goes through 100%. So we'll go in here and add an offset point. I'm sorry. Let's do negative point. Uh, 5,000 again just to make sure. You zoom in here, you can see it goes all the way through. Make sure that we have a perfect hole. Cycle time, or I'm sorry, yeah, cycle type. 
So being that we're drilling, if you're, if you're new to working with metal, you don't want to just drive the drill down. You want to break the chips up. The reason you want to do that is it preserves the tool life. You're not going to create a ton of heat. Um, and it, it's, it's just overall less stressful. Um, you don't have to worry about a drill breaking or going dull on you. So we're going to come over here, look for chip breaking. Pecking depth. Uh, 47 thou. We'll see how that works. We'll hit OK. Fusion is usually pretty good with their defaults. And we'll go try and simulate it. Alright. Let's slow this down so you guys can see a little bit. Hit play. Actually, let me speed it up for you. All right, so it didn't do exactly what we wanted. Let's let's take a look at that again. Yeah, it's going through all the way. So let's that's not what we wanted. Let's go ahead and edit that. All right, whole faces, cycle time, optimize order. We'll see why it's doing that chip breaking, packing depth. And, uh, let's try changing that to 10. But, oh. Try changing that to 10 thousandths of an inch. Accumulated pecking depth. We'll do 187. Oh, sorry, 1875 for 316s. We'll hit OK and we'll try it again. There we go. So, a lot of this is going to be trial and error, as you can tell. Um, you kind of change some numbers around, simulate it, make sure it's doing what you want it to do. Um, this right here is very useful if. Your computer can handle it. Unfortunately, mine cannot. It's a 2011 MacBook Pro, and the graphic card just can't keep up. If I click on that, it will actually crash the program, and we definitely don't want that at this point. So now that we got what we needed, we'll click Close. Um, actually, Statistics, 20 seconds to drill three holes. Uh, you're not doing that by hand with a drill press. Click Close. So now if you want to see how everything goes, we'll play with that again. Coming in, spot drilling, tool change, and you're through drilling. All right, perfect. We'll close that out. All right, so now we need to kind of strategize how we're going to do the order of operations. So this guy is going to be sitting on a fixture plate held down with CA glue. So if we slot these out right now, there's really not going to be too much for it to hold on to while we do the other operations. So we're going to leave these profiles alone. We're not going to contour it on this side yet, but we are going to work on the bevels. All right. Got the bevels of the knife here. The tool that we're going to use for that is a 316th bull nose end mill. And, you know, that end mill is good for contouring, but it's not great at removing material. So what we're, we're going to want to do before that is we're going to go and do some clearing. We're going to use an adaptive clearing tool path. Um, adaptive clearing, what that does is it clears out the majority of the stock here. We'll leave a little bit of the stock for the bull nose to come in and kind of do the finishing work, get it nice and clean. Um, we'll go into the tool, we'll select a tool. Um, I like using the eighth inch tool just because it gets it pretty tight to where I want it and we don't have to worry about it going too far further. Uh, it gets the contour really, really close. So we'll select that. 
come over to the geometry tab and then we'll change the stock contours machining boundary we'll go with a selection we want the tool outside the boundary because uh, let's hold it over there so if you see here with the tool outside the boundary it will actually go off the edge of the knife which is exactly what we want so we want it to kind of clear out as much as it can um, so let's go ahead and select the geometry here you have to move it around a little bit to have it do it correctly uh, let's see we've got that right there and this bevel right there so now you can see the profile is done for that one we're gonna flip her around whoops flip around towards the spine we'll select the swedge right there and let's see if we can zoom in and get it to select the plunge uh, it's wanting to select the entire knife. all right let's try this all right so we've got the bevel and we've got the swedge we really don't want it to do the entire profile of the knife so now we're gonna have to deselect some of it and the way that we do that is you click on the lines that you want to get rid of uh, let's see here. Well, I want it to let that we'll add that and then we'll get rid of that so what we're going to do come on Leave that alone. Select the blue. We'll get rid of that. All right, so we'll double check it. Make sure that we have exactly what we want. We're going to be doing some 3D machining with the swedge and the front side bevel. Perfect. Get rid of rest machining don't know why I'm just told that it doesn't really need it so <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and use the advice that others have given me heights fusion pretty much knows what it's doing so we'll leave that one alone uh, for the passes this is where we kind of play around with it a little bit maximum roughing step down um, I like it pretty tight I usually do 40 thousandths of an inch uh, stop to leave will leave 20 thousandths of an inch and the machine that I'm using right now I work out of a makerspace called Femilab over here in Longwood Florida they've got a Haas VF1 from the early 90s and it doesn't have a ton of memory so we'll we'll turn smoothing on change it to 1000 smoothing we'll go to linking everything and linking looks fine it's ramping goes in there so ramping means that it's going to ramp down in there versus just straight plunging in um, everything looks pretty good there so come back over here click OK and we will check yeah all looks pretty good so let's uh, let's see what it does we'll simulate it Make it a little bit smaller so you can kind of fit everything in the screen. Get that up and out of the way. And let's go. Slow it down a little bit so you can kind of see. And there you go. So you can see it's kind of coming up. Coming down real smooth where the plunge is, coming along the edge of the blade, and clearing out stock so that we can bring in the um, the finishing tool. So we'll speed that up a little bit just to get it done. Let it do its thing. 
Alright. Perfect. Let's go ahead and save it, uh, because we don't want to do that again in case Fusion freezes, and Fusion definitely does have a propensity to freezing up. Alright. Next operation. 3D. Oh, actually, let's do this. We'll play with the flow toolpath. Now, like I said, what we're going to do for the, uh, the bevels, we're going to use a corner radius or a bullnose end mill. So we come over here, we're going to select the tool, bullnose. Uh, if you can kind of see there, well, yeah. Hit OK. And then we're going to select the geometry. Now, the geometry that we want is the bevel. The plunge line, the swedge, and the other plunge line. Um, side note, if you guys hear a bunch of clicking in the background, it's my dog just kind of exploring and wondering why I'm sitting here talking to myself. Um, but she's, uh, yeah, she's doing her thing. Now, the arrows that you see here are going to be the direction that the tool is going to go in all right so we'll go ahead and leave it like this you can kind of see what it does and then we'll come back and change it to how it should be um for passes it's going to want to know how many step overs it's we're going to do step overs is basically how, how do i explain this is basically the tool path how many times the tool runs along the surface of the work piece that you're wanting to machine. I think I got that right. So one, you only have the one step over. Let's try 30, see how that goes. Uh, stock to leave, we want it to kind of clean it up perfectly, so we'll leave that off. Smoothing, it's gonna be pretty complicated. So we'll change that again to 1000, so that it runs as smooth as it can. Um, Lead-ins, uh, everything looks Pretty good there. Passes, tools. All right, let's go to OK. See what it does. So you can see there. Remember over here we had the arrows going up and down. This is where we can get creative. If you guys are doing a full CNC knife and you want it to kind of show off the machining, the, the tooling marks in a certain way, this is where you can get creative. So this is vertical, kind of like a, a radial or a, a sunburst pattern. Um, we'll go ahead and edit it the other way. Come over to the geometry here. And all you have to do to change direction is click the arrows. All right. We'll click OK for that. And now it's generating the different tool paths. And now you can see it's pretty close to what you see on, say, a Grimsmo knife where the toolpath is going along the edge of the blade. I really like that look. I think it's pretty clean. Um, I think we what we might want to do though is separate it a little bit so that it's even. Uh, because remember we selected the number of step overs as being 30. You got a bunch here, got a bunch here. Let's go ahead and separate the geometries. So we'll come back, edit it again, right click, edit. Under geometry, we will deselect that and we will deselect that. Deselect. There we go. Click OK to have it generate. And there we go. All right, let's go ahead and simulate it so you guys can see what it does. Sorry, let me go ahead and start that over. You see it's doing the plunge lines there. And now it's going to come and do the actual blade. Go ahead and speed it up for you guys. And done. I like it. Let's save that. 
and we'll go to the flow tool path again and this time we'll attack the swedge. We'll go to multi-axis, select flow, pick that geometry and that geometry. Now because we, are, we just use this and we already populated it with the tool that we want, it went ahead and did it for us. And for uh, for reference sake, just so you guys know, I'm using a 3 16th end mill with a 40 thou radius bull nose that I got from Lakeshore Carbide. Uh, it's about, I think, $13, very reasonable, as long as you're not breaking it left and right. Um, let's go ahead and actually, we'll, yeah, we'll label that later. Uh, we'll go to geometry, we'll pick the toolpath that goes along the edge of the blade. Uh, how many step overs? Well, it's a lot smaller than the bevel here. The bevel here, we had 30. You saw what that looked like. Fitting 30 in here is a little bit busy, so we're gonna change that to maybe seven. Because it's, you can see here, it's a little, it's less than half, probably a quarter of what uh, the, the bevel is. Generating. Uh, let's see if we can fit a few more in there. Edit. Step overs. Bump that up to nine. Actually, let's go ahead and do this. Smoothing. Change that to one thou. Thing there looks about right. Hit OK. A little bit better. Was that actually nine? Two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I guess it's nine. Let's do a few more. Like I said, this is a trial and error endeavor. Just keep messing with it until you get it to where you want it. Uh, let's see if that'll match. So click that. Go to simulate. And it shows the tool paths. Does everything look to be about even? Actually, let's turn off the adaptive real quick so that it's not... Here, hold on. There we go. Everything looks about even there. Right? Yeah. All right, I like it. Let's save it. All right, now we're done. We're done on the first side. So let's uh let's see what we accomplished there. We'll select that. Let's simulate. And then press go. So right now it's doing the adaptive clearing. Getting all that stock out of the way to contour the bevel. Now it's doing the bevel. And now it's doing the swedge. Exactly what we wanted. Perfect. So now that we've got the first side done, uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to split this up into two parts. Upload the first part, uh, which is the, the, the front side of the knife, um, to YouTube. And then I'll edit, upload the second side of the knife uh, in a second video. That way you're not sitting in front of your computer or TV for an hour and watch me just ramble on about a knife. Um, so yeah. Check it out. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. If this video helped you at all, please make sure to like the video. Um, I plan on doing uh, a, quite a bit more with regards to uh, different projects, learning more about making knives, learning more about just making things in general. So if you want to follow along, uh, please also subscribe and share the channel. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.